This video will explain a really interesting study from Google's DeepMind Lab on multitask self-supervised visual learning. So the headline idea is that we have these self-supervised tasks, like predicting the rotation of an image, like 90 degree rotation, 180 degrees. And then we have uh, self-supervised tasks, like predicting the relative location of patches extracted from the same image. So we don't really quite understand exactly how these representations work, but what if we use the same uh, convolutional neural network feature extractor to perform multiple self-supervised tasks? And in this paper, the headline idea is that they find that combining these self-supervised tasks always improves performance in every combination of the task study. So the best joint uh, network trained on multiple self-supervisation tasks learns a representation that does just as well as pre-training on the labeled ImageNet data set on the Pascal object detection. And this is much more interesting because these self-supervised tasks can scale up to billions and trillions of images like what we have on uh, YouTube and Google Images and Instagram and maybe Pinterest too without anyone needing to label any of these images for tasks like object detection which is putting a bounding box around certain images. Like you take these representations and then you fine tune it on the computer vision task that you are trying to solve. So self-supervised learning, modern deep neural networks are data starved. They can fit random labels for large image collections and there's limitlessly uh, endless supply of unlabeled images available. So these are the tasks that they study in this paper. Relative position. This is where you take two crops from the same image and then you predict, uh, it's like an eight way classification problem where you predict like uh, top left, left, bottom left, uh, you know, bottom, bottom right, predict the relative position of the patches with reference to each other. Colorization is where you have a grayscale image and then you predict the RGB uh, corresponding pair. The exemplar task is where you take an image and then you perform a ton of data augmentations on it. And then you have a Siamese network, which a Siamese network basically says uh, you pass two images through the same feature extractor and then you have another like kind of multi-layer perceptron or something like that at the end that connects these two features and performs some task like in the exemplar class it's like is this still the same image even though it's been augmented like crazy and then motion segmentation is this idea of uh, predicting using video frames like the next video frame and this is one of my favorite tasks because it seems intuitive that the way uh, animals and humans might learn uh, visual representations is by predicting the next frame in video because we're always processing these uh, video frames so multitask learning uh, the idea here is that you have the uh, image input and then you have these feature extractors and then you pass the same features to these different uh, task heads. So these uh, this could be the rotation. These are like specific parameters to the self-supervised task. So these parameters would be only for rotation and these would be only for colorization. Oh, I'm sorry. And they also uh, do test uh, rotation as a self-supervised task. I forgot to put that on the slide. So a previous study uh, on multitask learning combined seven supervised tasks where they're labeled data sets, but still there's no free lunch in this and they found the best results using just two out of the seven uh, tasks rather than using all of the tasks available. So there are some problems with combining tasks that the authors mentioned and that's the input channel can conflict. For example, when your colorization is the task, you necessarily have to pass these uh, like 224 by 224 by one uh, input images. You can't have the RGB input. So, and then another one is learning task might conflict, like uh, semantic categorization uh, would be different from instance matching. Like for example, you might need fine grained details to tell the difference between a golden retriever and some other specific dog breed, whereas you wouldn't need that kind of uh, detail for a seg semantic segmentation task where you're trying to label the pixels as dog and then label some other pixels as grass or sky or ocean or something. So the first uh, solution they propose is input harmonization, and this is how they sync up the inputs to their network. And then this is a really interesting idea. The, the results from it are a little disappointing, but this idea is probably going to be around for a while because it's a very powerful idea. And what it is is basically, uh, as you have the shared feature representation, each task, they're not going to share the same features. Rather, they're going to go and uh, apply these masks to the intermediate features. So this rotation task isn't just going to take the same features as the colorization task. Rather, it's going to go and learn a set of weights that, such a, as a, to like which features it's going to use from the shared representation. So here's a much simpler idea of this. It says, imagine the, this matrix is our features, like 5, 4, 6, 5, something like this. Task 1 might have this kind of mask, so you wouldn't look at these features at all. And then task 2 might have uh, this kind of mask putting an extra emphasis on this or something. 
So this is kind of the idea of each task would have its own feature mask and it would learn its feature mask during training. So this doesn't work too well in this study, but it does show an almost 1% improvement when they do this for evaluation. So for the ImageNet classification, they would take a separate mask for classification features as detection or segmentation features. And then they also impose this uh, lasso penalty, which is uh, they're trying to uh, encourage the combination to be sparse. And uh, I'm not quite sure yet on my personal understanding of the sparsity uh, constraints in neural networks. So again, they're also going to use this uh, with the evaluation task. Each evaluation task is going to have a feature mask rather than just all using the same features for detection, classification, and then uh, depth prediction is what they'd use in this paper. So their multitask architectures is there's the common trunk. That's where they all share the same features. And then there's the uh, lasso where they uh, have different features. And some intuition to this, it might be like, if we're sharing a feature representation between player A and player B, player A's gradient might be like, add five to this value. And player B might say, oh, minus five to this. And then they'll just do this on and on and on and on. And it won't really result in any kind of uh, interesting learning. And so this is also kind of like the mixture of experts idea, how you can have a represent, like a very big representation and then different tasks that have different ways of accessing that intermediate representation. So also they implement this with the distributed training scheme. And it's pretty interesting that they use a, uh, they find that just asynchronous training generally is unstable, but with a hybrid approach where they basically are synchronous when the workers are doing the same task. So like if task one through, let's say 10, is doing a rotation prediction. They'll wait until all 10 of them are finished with their gradients, and then they'll update the network, but they wouldn't wait for like a colorization worker to be finished. So they're gonna test this on, they're gonna evaluate the self-supervised uh, representations on ImageNet classification, Pascal VOC detection, and then NYU depth prediction. These are the data sets and tasks. And so the evaluation procedure is to take the last block, and they're gonna test the, uh, just using the same features for all tasks, and then the, uh, you know, applying the uh, task-specific mask to it. So these are the results from the individual tasks, no multitask learning. So this is the ImageNet, the fully supervised benchmark. And this is on top five accuracy, not top one, which is also kind of, if you're surprised at the high accuracy of all this. But so here you see uh, colorization performs the best, but all, you know, relatively similar and then on all tasks, except for in the depth prediction, the ImageNet features aren't really too useful. So this is just the uh, table, just to reference for uh, how they all perform relative to each other on these uh, different tasks. ImageNet top one, ImageNet top five, object detection, and then NYU depth prediction. So then this is the most interesting results of the paper. This is the results from combining the tasks. So most interestingly, they get the best result from just combining all of the tasks, rotation prediction, colorization, exemplar, and motion segmentation. And adding the motion segmentation does perform does provide a slight boost over not using it. And then most interestingly, you see 10% improvement from uh, just doing rotation prediction. And then really interestingly, you see that they've basically closed the gap between object detection and using ImageNet pre-training. And this is especially interesting because you could do this with like billions of images. You don't need any labels for this. And But they're still pretty far on ImageNet classification. But it's sort of unfair because, I mean, this is the exact task that they're testing it on. So this is the harmonization and lasso results, the two uh, like uh, novel algorithms, they kind of, the modifications they propose. And they don't really have any, the, the result isn't that interesting, but it's still a really cool idea. And they, they do get a little bit of a good result on the evaluation only lasso. So the concluding thoughts is that uh, it's definitely interesting to see how combining tasks outperforms single tasks. It's almost uh, like you can think of adding maybe a generative adversarial network to this, and you can just think of being creative and figuring out how, what other uh, self-supervised learning tasks can be derived. Maybe uh, like visual question answering could be integrated with this. There's definitely going to be more self-supervised tasks that come out soon, I, I would predict. So then the uh, improvement from the single task from 59% to 69% is, is really interesting with the multitask addition. It's still far from using the labels, but you can imagine using a larger data set, a larger model, or maybe even using neural architecture search and then optimizing the model for uh, self-supervised learning, self-supervised multitask learning. And then it's this uh, lasso feature masking idea. This definitely seems like an idea of the future. It's a really interesting idea to wrap your head around. So thanks for watching this video on multitask self-supervised learning from DeepMind. 
Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos. Thanks for watching.